Hi everybody, I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. And I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Tor channel, and we thank you guys very much for being a part of our channel. We have our egg incubator that seems to be beeping, and we will have Nicole take off and figure out what's going on. We have three baby chickens that are just coming out and hatching, um, which is a miracle in this house because we have a hard time getting baby chickens to hatch. So, Yah is always a wonderful creator. He is also a wonderful designer. And I, let me set you, I got, a, I got a kind of a cool story that I want to tell you guys. Um, so yesterday, we're down in part of the country. We're down in this, in this world where it, it, we have two seasons. We have wet season and dry season. And it's extremely wet for like six months, and it's extremely dry for six months. And that is our ecosystem down here. And what was happening yesterday is we ended up with a uh, almost like a huge storm above our heads like a thunder it was a complete thunderstorm above our heads and it was all it was literally from one side it started off and there was the loudest boom that i think i've ever heard we thought maybe someone had like bombed us or something of the sort and uh it just was bam it cracked the dogs erupted and uh it started off and there was literally lightning all around us now it's probably for some folks it's probably not a big deal but our entire life is on our roof because we have solar and so if we lose our solar, we're going to be in kind of hot water. And so it was an enormous storm. It was going crazy. And it was, um, it reminded me of when Moshe and all of the people, they heard Yah on the top of the mountain. And, you know, we were like, well, you know, how loud would it have to be for people to be real scared? It was just like, there's, there's something wrong with these people. And then all of a sudden that pounding was going all around us. And it was, I could see out the front window and lightning was zipping everywhere. We were right in the middle of the storm and it kept getting worse and worse and worse. The rain was coming down like hurricane style and it was just crazy. So Kate and I are sitting out here and we're like, you know, we're like, wow, you know, this this a few more of these. I mean, we might actually lose everything we have. And so we said a little prayer, right? We, we said something and I said to the fact, you know, Father, you know, we are... Um, we are scared, you know, we are, we are, you know, we are humans, right? And this, this kind of stuff scares us, right? And this is, it, uh, it uh, could very well damage our power. It could very well, you know, Father, is there a way you can maybe lessen this or lighten this up, maybe protect us a little bit? And then Cade prayed. And as soon as he got done praying, it almost, it, it went from tremendous thunderstorms to like almost nothing. And then it picked up just a little bit again, and then it just cooled off. But there was no more lightning flashing around us. There was no more crazy thunderstorms. There was no more any of this stuff. And um, it, was, it was insane. I mean, is, is it just a coincidence? Or is it something where we called out to Yah and he literally pulled us out of the middle of this thunderstorm? And I thought it was in incredible. I, I, I know it's Yah. I know it's the hand of Yah. I know there's no such thing as coincidences. I, I know it was, we were right in the middle of it and it looked like it was intensifying. It really did. It was just all around us. And I've never seen one where the thunderstorm got right above our heads and we lightning was going around all around our house. So it was, it was very wild. So I believe the hand of Yah listened to our prayers as, as quiet as we are, or as you know, whatever we are, he listens to the prayers of those who are after him and seeking him. And, um, I, I, I don't know any other way to say it. Kate, what do you, what do you think? Uh, I think it's the power of prayer. I think Yah is listening to his people. Did that amaze you or what? Yeah, it was, it was actually very impressive. I would just kind of like, it just mellowed out. It just, we, we have 10 roofs. And so when you hear rain on 10, it's like, it slams. And yesterday it was just, you, there's no way you could hear anything. It was just, it was crazy anyone else anyone nicole did you hear that when it went down yes and what'd you think i was kind of in shock that it just kind of like went to a lull and then... it was just a short little prayer and we were just like yeah yeah uh this is the stuff that scares little humans like us and um we see your power we see your might we know what it can do all right um so with that um Kate, give me a blessing that you have give me any blessing that you have that you 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 are blessed with um anything Start with that, and then Jay. Uh, I'm blessed with air that, that we can breathe, that we are alive every single day to continue on in the will of our Father, that we can teach and we can show people what the truth is, and that we can live our lives the best way we can to please Yahuwah. Ab absolutely. Jade, give me some, some blessing, uh, anything. I don't care what it is. We are blessed for knowing, the, for being very few of the people that know the Torah and know that it's still there. Yeah, very, very, very much so. And, you, you know, you can see... 
the world that doesn't have the Torah. And I, I was watching some videos out of New York City this morning, and the people are wild. They've just they've lost their minds. I don't know any other way around it. Everybody took the snake venom, and now everybody's lost their minds. And I, I, I don't have any other explanation other than the best path forward is always the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. And um, Nicole. We're blessed for having a merciful Creator that created all of us and the birds and everything. Yeah, very merciful. In fact, not even just merciful. It, he's very patient with us. And a lot of us, I mean, we were we were evil Babylonians. We came out of Mystery Babylon. Um, we, we were into great evil in comparison of what our creator's <coughs> will is for all of us. There's a dog choking it up. Yeah, so it, we, he's, he's patient. He's merciful. He's, he's kind. He's um, slow to, to wrath, right? If we... I, I, there's so many times I can tell you back in my past where he should have smoted me, the lightning should have been down, I should have been dropped dead on the ground, and he preserved us for a time such as this. Eli? Uh, we're blessed with our cows so we can have meat and milk. Yeah, someday. Um, we've been, we, that's, that's been our goal is to try to have milk, but we lost our dairy cow a long time ago, and we're hoping at some point we do, but yeah, we do have cows, we have our friends of cows, and hopefully one day they will grow up and they will... Um, produce milk for us. All right. Um, I am blessed. I think I am blessed just with the entire family, family structure, I think is, is where I feel most blessed. And a lot of, a lot of guys don't, um, you don't value a family. And I guess a lot of females don't value the family like this, but a properly aligned family by Yah in the word of Yah is, is incredible. It's just simply amazing. And um, you know, a lot of people, I've told people before, don't, don't put us on a pedestal. We are absolutely not pedestal style people. In fact, if there's greatest sinners amongst all of you, that's probably me. It starts here. Um, hopefully not my kids, but I mean, we all, we all have issues. You know, we have anger issues. I have anger issues and it, it leads to impatience. It leads to high blood pressure. It leads to all sorts of stuff. So we are, you know, just travelers on this road, trying to find this road and, um, when I say my family, I want to include that out to everybody out there who we talk to on a, on a daily basis. And, you know, we, we have, you know, people that we consider more family than the family that we have because they have taught, they talk to us more, they care about us, we care about them. And it, it, it feels like we have discovered our family outside of our family after our family abandoned us and basically said, you know, um, when you want to come back to the United States of America, you can, uh, you know, uh, I can't say exactly what they said to us, but, um, something about pulling our heads out of places and things of that nature. And, um, I will leave it at that. And so we have, we are blessed with all of you guys out there. So I'd like to extend the, the love out to all you guys and, um, let's get on, let's get on with this thing and let's, let's see what Yah has in store for us today. So with that, let us get to our handy dandy split screen. And um, so far, it's 100%. It never lets me down. Cade, what do you have? Uh, just for a little quick recap, um, the last chapter, which I was not here for, um, basically. Why weren't you here, Cade? I was uh, out uh, dealing with corn, spraying eating bugs, corn, bugs, getting rid of bugs. Yeah, they were eating all leaves, eating everything. They and we actually, it. he actually slipped away before we actually got to this, and he was long gone before we ever did this, or we would have had Cade for sure. Um, I mean, but last time, they basically had the opening ceremony where they were. Put, put the clothes on themselves, they made the sacrifices, and that's what happened last chapter for anyone that... Yeah, so he here. put, not only did he put the clothes on him, he put the clothes on him in front of all the people, right? And they set up this stuff, they basically ordained them. Um, and one thing I didn't set up, but I want to talk about the the Uman and the Thurman, Thuman. And it came from last, let's see, where is it at, guys, in this? It is verse 6. Verse. No, verse, no, my bad. It is verse there it is, eight. eight. Okay, and he put the breastplate upon him. Also, he put in the breastplate the um, the Urimin and the Tumimin. And so I did not know about exactly what this was. And this is why it is incredible having all of you guys out there. Um, because this is the two rocks, right? This is the two different rocks that the priest had. And it was essentially the word of Yah. Um, they would put whatever the rocks in a bag or wherever it is. I don't know how they do it, but when they were asking or seeking Yah's advice, they would pull the rock out. And if it was black, it was one way. If it was white, another thing. Um, and so another fellow, uh, 
explain that a little bit more and I will have that one ready for us on the next one. And I do appreciate it. I appreciate um, all of you guys' feedback. The Clarissa Cottons that come up with this stuff. And Clarissa was um, one other one I want to um, speak about. Well, she was speaking about how there were different showers in all the priests' outfits. And she was talking about how the priests, if you, you the duties of the priests were to, if somebody was had sores and cess, you know, all sorts of nasty stuff, right? They would come to the priest and the priest would look at them. At some level, the priest is going to become unclean because of that. And so she was talking about like different showers that were all over these different places. And I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I thought it was interesting because as a priest, that's one thing you're going to have to look out for. I mean, it's plausible to have like different showers to keep things clean. You're not going to want to go bath in the same area. The unclean person was to not spread disease. Yeah, and as clean as Yah is, you know, one thing I was thinking about because we're we're about to get into another ceremony where they're about to sprinkle more blood, right? There had to be like a Levitical janitorial service, right? After all of this was over, somebody had to go get all the blood off because the, the blood would have baked on the horns because they're always sprinkling the blood on the horns of the altar, and so as he, much heat as that has and that generates, that's going to basically make you're going to have to scrape off the blood off of everything and you're going to have to wipe it down and I don't think Yah's going to want you to have um, you awake Jubs? Mm -hmm. okay just checking one of my one of my boys went to sleep no. okay just checking <laughs> so you're going to always have to have this cling you're, and you, it's going to be a whole process so the Levites I don't think were just sitting there killing things they were uh, there was probably the younger priests that were the, the cling up crew and there was just a tremendous amount of work to do during this alright so let's get let's get on it okay so here it is Leviticus 9 and it came to pass on the eighth day that Moshe called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Yashrael. And he said unto El Aaron, Take a calf for a sin offering and a ram for a sinning smoke offering without blemish and offer them before Yahuwah. I was just checking to make sure we're recording. And we were, no problems. And unto the children of Yashrael you shall speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year without blemish, for an ascending smoke offering. All right, so I noticed something when I pre-read this one. Anyone want to read, anyone see anything here? The male, maybe? It's babies, right? Everything uh, here is all babies, right? Well, so that's, we, that's different with yours, because mine doesn't say a calf, and it says, in verse 4, it says, and a bull and a ram. Okay, and so you say a bull and a ram? Mm-hmm, in verse so, in the well, NIV, yeah, back to three. So in the yeah, NIV, it's a male goat for a sin offering, a calf and a, a calf lamb. And lamb. Yeah, mine are a calf and lamb. But yours? And then verse four, it says a bull and a ram. Oh, okay. Ours well, does. Okay. Well, it's a year old. So right. they're only a year old. So, I mean, they're still uh, relatively small. A, yeah, they're going to be. A calf is a smaller, a one-year-old calf isn't actually that large. No. Not it takes a few years for them to actually get to where they're like, the huge size. And, and a lamb. I mean, even a one-year-old lamb can't be that big. I don't big. think lambs get that big, do they? What? Lambs don't get that big. They get, they can um, get heavier. I don't know. With like I mean, I've a, seen some big lambs, but I've never seen a like a physical sheep. I mean, shepherds close. are able to obviously put them up on their shoulders and carry them around for several days on end, so uh, they can't be that big. Yeah. Well, I think that was a baby lamb is what they put up on the shoulders. I don't know if it's like a full size I don't know. Lamb. I didn't know if they, uh, the goat would, the lamb would run away at all times. They would like break his leg and walk yeah, around. Yeah, but this it. is like, I don't think it's like a large lamb. You're not going to be able to yeah, pack around 100 pounds on your shoulder or something. I don't know. Shepherds were so, strong. Somebody out there who has a sheep, let us know. How big do they get? I don't know. All right, so four. Also a bullock and a ram for peace offerings to sacrifice before Yahuwah and an oblation mingled with oil for today Yahuwah will appear before you. And they brought which Moshe commanded before the tabernacle of the assembly, and all the assembly drew near and stood before Yahuwah. I mean, imagine that, that you hear that Yahuwah is going to appear before them. Imagine that they're about to remain well, they, there. That's going to be a crazy nerve-wracking thing, right? Like, oh, I get to meet Yahuwah today. He's going well, to Well, last time me. they want, they already had a chance to meet Yahuwah. But this is like the priest in general, like, basically, like, this is like, they get recruited by Moses, and then the boss is like, you're going to meet the CEO of this company. He's like the most powerful dude ever, and he's like, here you go, you're going to come meet him. And that's probably a crazy thing. It's definitely a crazy thing. It's still also their second time, right? Because they, they yeah. had this chance to do that, and, and they had Moshe. They're like, yeah, this, this scares the... But did, was everyone scared, or maybe just like some people? I, I don't I'm know. sure it's the majority, I mean... Dude, after last night's thunderstorms, I mean, it is... Yaw can scare the heck out of us without even really trying. We are, um, <laughs> we're just humans, right? Loud noises scare us, uh, darkness scares us, things of that nature, right? So, um, and uh, let's see, where are we at? Six? Six. Okay, and Moshe said, this is the thing which Yahuwah commanded that ye should do. 
and the glory of Yahuwah shall appear unto you. And Moshe said unto El Elron, Go unto the altar and offer your sin offering and your sending smoke offering and make an atonement for yourself and for the people and offer the offering of the people and make an atonement for them as Yahuwah commanded. Aaron therefore went unto the altar and slew the calf of the sin offering which was for himself. And the sons of Aaron brought the blood unto him and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar and poured out the blood at the bottom of the altar. So this is a little different here, right? So that's, this is Aaron. Instead of Moshe doing this, now you have Aaron doing this, right? And so Aaron dipped his finger in the blood and put it up on the horns of the altar. So I don't know if they put it on themselves at this point. They were sanctifying the altar at this point. But the fat and the kidneys and the call above the liver of the sin offering, he burnt up on the altar as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Okay, so actually this is weird because this is, he's actually burning the stuff that he wasn't burning prior to this, right? Because the fat, and the kit, fat for sure, but kidneys and call and liver and stuff like that, we mentioned that before, that it wouldn't really smell too well. Um, but maybe, I don't know, maybe liver food or something, I don't know. All right, and 11. And the flesh and the hide he burnt with fire without the camp. So again, this is a little bit different than the other priests that were able to take the hide um, they took the, the flesh and the hide. And I don't know what it means with flesh. Um, and the flesh and the hide. What's your guys say? Flesh and the skin. Flesh and the skin? Yep. Flesh and the skin. So I don't know exactly what that would be. So are we talking meat? Or what are we talking about? Because the hide is their, is their, their it's furry skin. probably the stuff that's right under the skin. I think it, they talk about that. I think it's like another piece of fat is what y'all calls that. I yeah. think is that. Yes. All right. So we're just meandering here. All right. And he slew the ascending smoke offering, and Aaron's son presented unto him the blood, which he sprinkled round about upon the altar. So this is yet more of Aaron's kids and Aaron taking over this, where Moshe did it to begin with, and um, now they're they're running it. And they presented the ascending smoke offering unto him, with the pieces thereof and the head, and he burnt them upon the altar. Now, do you think the head was? This might be gross. Is the head skinned, or is it just a with the fur on it? Oh, I don't know. Because I, the fur, the hide was was supposed to be taken off of it. I'm, I assume it was probably skinned. I would agree. I would think but so. It, there's not a lot of meat on a head of a. But cow, it would honestly. smell. I think it smells funny. But I mean, it, there's still meat on the head, right? In fact, uh, I'll have to tell you a story. Back in the days, I had a little buddy named uh, Marco who was uh, he was actually a legal immigrant in. Uh, from Mexico, and he, he, I hired him. I didn't know he was a legal immigrant at the time, but I hired him. But we went to this little Mexican taco stand, and we ate this stuff, and it was it was really not so good. And I asked him, I said, what is that? He's like, oh, that's called meat of the head. I'm like, what? And so several times I went to that little taco stand, and every time he, he like served me up tongue, and I'm like, what is this, man? It's got bumps all over it. So when you eat tongue, the tongue has bumps all over it, and then the meat of the head... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm from, I was from Babylon, I was from North America, you know, we have, we had supermarkets and stores and we weren't used to the ways, you know, we've definitely learned the ways of the jungle people now, but back, that was like 20 some years ago and I was still a, uh, I wasn't even a hillbilly at that point, I was just a, a city slicker, so yeah, meat of the head, there's meat on the head. Yes. All right, all right, so. 14. 14. And he did wash the inwards and the legs and burnt them up on the ascending smoke offering on the altar. I want to touch on this point too as well. Um, because when you guys slaughter an animal, like if you take a chunk of meat from this slaughtered animal, it's, it's, has, it's, it needs to be washed, which is interesting, right? You could just, if you're just going to burn this thing, you would think that you would just cut it up and stick it on the altar. But they actually washed this. They washed everything out. So this meat doesn't have like the the uh, remnants of other stuff on it like the blood and all the other weird stuff so they literally washed the meat before offering this to Yah which I thought was very interesting and he brought the people's offering and took the goat which was the sin offering for the people and slew it and offered it for sin at his, at the first so okay so first he atones for the priest now he's atoning for the people right yeah it's like to make them all clean before Yahuwah like Yahuwah's like after all this time, he's like, this is like almost like a marriage ceremony. After they were about to have the marriage ceremony before, when they built the golden calf, and he separated himself from them. Only the ten appointment. It's like okay, everyone's like ready. Their hearts are there. They were they were willing to help me build my my house, my temple. 
and now he's like coming back, basically redoing the ceremony. They're cleaning themselves up, getting ready for the ceremony. Yeah, and you know, if if we did not have Messiah Yahushua as his blood, we would have no chance for Yah to dwell with us ever. And I I don't think that he like dwells with. He might dwell with us. I mean. Uh, but as far as he listens to us, I know for without a shadow of a doubt, he listens to us and he answers just even the small prayers for us, like immediately. But, um, yeah, I don't even know where I'm going with that. 16. Is this where I'm at? Yep. And he brought the ascending smoke offering and offered it according to the manner. And he brought the oblation and took a handful thereof and burnt it upon the altar beside the ascending smoke sacrifice of the morning. Okay, it's his grain offering. Yeah, uh, the grain, he okay. filled the grain offering and he filled it in his hand. So the first thing is that he brought the grain offering? Yeah, it's not an oblation. Oh, the king's back to the meat. I don't... Well, this would... Would this be meat? Why does... Mine's his grain offering. So why does... Because this, he filled his hand with it. He probably had grain. He filled his hand with the grain. Yeah. Why in the world would they say meat offering? They're, I don't... The king, the king doesn't know he really... The yeah. king's gone astray. <laughs> king has gone astray. Okay. Um, 18. He slew also the bullock and the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings, which was for the people. And Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood, which he sprinkled upon the round uh, altar round about. Okay, so this is like the third time that they've presented him with the blood. Life is definitely in the blood. There's something about the blood that makes things cling in the sight of Yah, which is, again, probably why we shouldn't be embalmed and just dump our blood out into the streets. Okay, and the fat of the bullock and of the ram, the rump, and that which covers the inwards, and the kidneys, and the call above the liver. And they put the fat upon the breast, and he burnt the fat upon the altar. All right, so what did they do with the call? What did they say? They appended. They appended on the liver. They... And did they put this on top of this, or did they get rid of it? They placed the fat yeah. on the breast, and he burned the fat on the altar. Yeah, yeah they put they, the they fat placed, they... upon the breast, but where did they put the rest of the stuff? So mine has a comma here. It just keeps going on. So it goes, and they placed the fat on the breast, and he burned the fat on the altar. I think it was all on the altar. I think. So I think from 18 to 20, that's all one part. It's all one yeah, sentence. Yeah, he slew the for a ram, sacrifice, and peace offerings, which was for the people. And Aaron's sons presented unto him the blood, which he sprinkled upon the altar round about, and the fat of the bullock and of the ram, the rump, and that which covers the inwards, and the kidneys, and the call builder. So some of this stuff, it doesn't make any, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I, I, but that doesn't make a bit of difference because I am... I am not on Yah's level, nor will I ever will be. Um, so I don't understand some of this where he has them take the skins out, and some of it I, I get. But some of the stuff he's actually, he's about to eat this stuff is what's going to happen here. So I, I've read on, so let's, let's hit it. 21. 21. And the breast and the right shoulder, Aaron waved for a wave offering before Yahuwah as Moshe commanded. And Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them. And came down from offering of the sin offering and the ascending smoke offering and peace offerings. And so yours guys is sin offering. What is it? Burn off, uh, fellowship offering. Sin offering, the burn offering, and the peace offering. All right. So the NIV says fellowship offering. So instead the, of peace offering. Instead of peace offering. Yeah. So fellowship or peace. Okay. Um, okay. 23. And Moshe and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the assembly and came out. And bless the people, and the glory of Yahuwah appeared unto all of the people. That would be amazing. And there came a fire out from before Yahuwah, and consumed upon the altar the ascending smoke offering and the fat. Doesn't say the rest of that stuff. Which, when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their face. So Yahuwah sent fire out and ate the food. Uh, yes. He ate. He ate the. This is yeah. This is the time he ate so the food. Wonder, this was just like back in the day with Adam and Eve, when that's how he originally wanted us to sacrifice. He would send the fire down before the nephilim right. and the fallen taught us how to make fire. He would basically light the fire for us and basically show that he is with us. So does that mean our Creator eats meat in heaven? I think so. I don't know. He must. He's. Oh, maybe maybe feeding the, feed the messengers. Maybe they're hungry. So people have said before that we were not meant to eat meat from the beginning. Does that make sense to you guys? No, because they literally have meat here for these guys. Yes, but this is what I'm saying. From the beginning, we were not meant to eat meat. Think about this. Think about the beginning of the garden. Beginning. They, the well, beginning we, of the garden had Adam and Eve, right? And we know from, was it Enoch or Adam and Eve that the animals talked? Uh, oh, Jubilees. Oh, Jubilees. Right, and so we know that prior to the fall, animals would, would you could actually talk to animals. They yeah. would they would They'd carry probably, on conversations. I don't think we would have had any need to like eat them because they... Yep. In the garden, they probably didn't eat them. They had fruits and stuff. And so is that get... statement correct? From the beginning, we were not meant to eat meat. 
I mean, we had clean and unclean animals already. He, I mean, no one knew what they were, but that's, I don't know. He did know what they, he did, but I'm like, talking like in the garden. I'm talking about in the garden. I don't think we flee animals in the because of every tree that bore fruit was meant for them every everything they grew that's why you're supposed to be a gardener you're supposed to eat that fruit and their bodies were much different if you read the book of Adam and Eve their bodies were much different now where he, there were several times the, the human body changed throughout uh, the Bible where the first one was when Adam and Eve sinned and the second one during Noah's time when he's like I'm going to limit three years to 120 there's too wicked of people to live this long and keep trying to sin against me so he there were several times where the human body went through several changes to where probably we are meant to eat meat now than where we weren't back in the garden right so let's go back to that were we to eat meat from the beginning no no, no. I don't I do not think Nicole, so Nicole you got anything <laughs> she's over there she's so quiet um, okay um, I, I, I tend to agree I think back in the garden I don't think we were I, I think that y'all would have those animals there we were like chatting with them and then you would cut their throats hey Adam yeah, we probably need that meat now for protein or something for our bodies now yeah probably or um, yeah I, I don't know maybe maybe not I don't know vegetarians seem to look very healthy um, but I've also heard people that are only on a meat only diet of all whatever you call it and they, they do very well um, so I don't know. It's, it's all over the place. Anyway, that was just something I thought about. Um, anyone have anything else? Nicole, you got anything? No. You're so, you're so loud over there. I know. My, my wife's so loud. <laughs> Eli? Nope. No. Nothing over there. Okay, I got nothing here. Anyone? Uh, read your Bibles. We will be live tonight at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the Youth for Y'all. Is it Eastern Standard? No, I think it's Central. It's Central. We don't even what's, know. What's the EST? We don't have time changes. Probably on EST. We're no, or CST. Oh, it changes all over because the, the states change yeah. times all the time. I don't know what time it is. Uh, yeah, we'll be live. Just check your subscription. <laughs> yeah, just just you will be live at some point. Whatever we don't know what time it is. Uh, <laughs> Six PM our time, I guess. I guess it's Central Standard Time. It changes all the time. We don't. Ch- nobody changes times down here. That's like a U.S. thing or something. Yeah, or maybe nobody I, else has daylight savings time. They don't care what the daylight savings time. Is. That's North Americans that want to get up at like the crack of dawn and like sleep at night but that's that's always been how it is so all right guys so uh anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about there the north america has time changes and i don't know what countries have time changes but like once a year they would either go uh forward or backwards an hour and uh, they would like make sure they they have an extra hour in the day or something one's in the spring and one's in the fall for the farmers so they had extra time why didn't they just get up early why did they have to change the time? Yeah, I don't know. that really makes but sense. But that's what they did. I think before. Arizona is the only state that had no time changes. They, they stay the same thing. So, But anyway, that's it. A little trivia there. Uh, much love to everybody out there. Anyone have anything else before we close? Uh, read your Bibles. Uh, see you guys soon. See you He answers prayers. So I, I literally, we before our very eyes, we saw a miracle happen last night. And it, it, it just happened. So it is what it is. All right. Blessings, All right. doll. All right. Shalom. Shalom.